Many detective and mystery films based on true stories often feel too mainstream and predictable. However, the storyline of this film is very different. It is highly mysterious, unpredictable until the end, and far from mainstream. After watching this recap, you will find yourself repeatedly wondering, how could a mystery detective film script be written this uniquely? Even while making this recap, I kept thinking that anyone who watches this would think, damn, this film is too good and highly unpredictable. If you are curious, watch until the end and pay close attention to every detail discussed in this recap. The story begins by following a local man named Augustus Lander, who arrives at the War Academy. Lander is a renowned detective who is grieving because he has just lost his beloved daughter. His arrival is to follow up on the mysterious death report of a cadet named Leroy Fry, who was found dead hanging from a tree in the backyard at night. A guard on duty that night said that when he found Fry, the body was in a squatting position with its feet touching the ground, leading Lander to suspect that Fry's death was not a suicide. This suspicion was further supported by the marks on his neck, indicating that Fry had struggled against the rope tied around his neck. The strangeness intensified when they discovered that Fry's body, stored in the hospital, had been split open and was missing its heart. Someone had cut open his chest with a scalpel, injuring his lungs and liver. They suspected that the perpetrator was quite experienced and Lander was assigned to find out who the perpetrator was and what the motive was for doing this. A 7.5 centimeters bruise was found on the back of Fry's head and a piece of paper was clenched in his right hand. The officer guarding Fry at the hospital said that nothing happened until 2.30 a.m. when an officer came to replace his duty, but the guard did not recognize the officer's face because in the dark, he only saw a badge of rank that had come loose on the officer's uniform. At the scene, Lander found a footprint on the snow. Shortly after, a cadet named Edgar Allan Poe introduced himself and said that the perpetrator was likely a poet. Poe himself was a poet and artist, so he knew a bit about how a poet might think. That night, Poe asked Lander to investigate a cadet named Locke, who used to be Fry's roommate until a quarrel separated them. The reason for the quarrel was never known until Fry was found dead, but the next day, Locke said that the quarrel was just a difference of opinion and had been forgotten over time. Secretly, Lander asked Poe for help in deciphering a piece of writing from the paper found on Fry's body, which might serve as a clue. That night, Poe came with his analysis, saying that the message was personal, written by the perpetrator that night to lure Fry out of his barracks to the location desired by the perpetrator. This message could be an invitation or, more precisely, a trap with a piece of a word remaining on the paper. Poe concluded the last two lines of the message, which read, Please don't be late, come quickly. Then Lander completed the sentence with the first two lines, resulting in a message, I will be at the niche near boards. Meet me there around 11 p.m., of course. There was no point in Fry meeting a fellow cadet at the border, so they suspected that this message was made or seemed to be made by a woman. This analysis made sense because on the morning of Fry's death, Poe saw a woman crying as she passed in front of the barracks. Coincidentally, on the same day, Poe wrote a poem about a mysterious woman whose inspiration came when he dreamed of meeting his long-deceased mother. Of course, Lander couldn't link Edgar's dream to the case he was investigating, but on the other hand, Lander also believed that the dead were always with their loved ones. Considering that the perpetrator might have taken Fry's heart for some purpose, it would likely be preserved. Therefore, Lander continued his investigation to the ice storage warehouse and left a message for Poe to meet him. Inside the warehouse, Lander found a door leading to the basement. There, Lander discovered a circular line and a triangular line within it, with traces of candles in the middle. Not long after Poe, who had just arrived, immediately suspected that the place was used as an altar for conducting religious ceremonies using Fry's blood and heart as media or prerequisites. Consequently, Lander sought the help of Professor Jean Pepe to uncover the meaning of the circle and triangle symbols. Pepe confirmed that it was a magic circle. The sorcerer would stand inside the triangle with a group of assistants, while candles and torches would be on either side. In a book written by Henry, the author left instructions to achieve immortality in a ritual using the heart of an unbaptized child or the heart of a person who died by hanging. Thus, Lander asks Poe to start infiltrating the cadets to find out who among them has an interest in the occult or a particular belief system. From his investigation, Poe obtained a name when one of the cadets named Hamilton mentioned Dr. Marcus. To speak with Dr. Markey, Poe then exercised and had his heart examined by Markey, who naturally found his heart beating fast. Consequently, Marquis gave him a rest permit that he had to present to Officer Artemis Markey, who was none other than Dr. Markey's son. After reading the permit, Artemis granted permission, and Poe was assigned under Artemis' leadership for the time being. Artemis asked Poe to meet him at 11 p.m. in Barrack North No. 18, 
Later, Poe came to Lander and immediately became interested when he saw the book collection of Lander's daughter, Mathilda, whom Lander believed had left with a man without a trace and with no hope of return. Unknowingly, Poe dropped a necklace hidden in that book. That night, Poe began to join Artemis Market Group. There was some discussion about Fry. They suspected Fry committed suicide because he broke up with Artemis' sister, but Artemis denied it, saying Fry was closer to Randolph than to any woman. Randolph, feeling insulted, retorted that Marques was also close to Fry. At 11 p.m., Poe went to the location requested by Artemis earlier, but Superintendent Thayer, seeing Poe, immediately ordered him to return because Fry was also known to wander around at night before he was found dead. Meanwhile, Lander wakes up feeling as if he has seen his daughter Mathilda in front of him. Unable to bear the sadness, Lander cried, remembering Mathilda's favorite dress. The next day, after attending a funeral ceremony, Fry's mother gave Lander Fry's notebook filled with symbols she did not understand. Subsequently, Lander also met Marquette and his wife Julia, briefly discussing Fry, whom Marcus deemed unfit for a military funeral. Lander only promised them to capture whoever was involved in Fry's death. Meanwhile, Poe and his new group visited Marcus' house that night. Poe used this opportunity to woo Lee, Artemis' sister, with his poetry, and they made plans to meet the next day. During their meeting, Lee had a brief seizure but quickly recovered and continued their time together. Lee's words were so captivating that Poe felt like the most extraordinary man she had ever known. That night, on his way home, Poe is attacked by Randolph, who demands Poe stay away from Lee until Lander arrives and stops the fight. Randolph then left them. The next day, the captain reported that Randolph had been declared missing. Together, they searched until they found Randolph dead deep in the forest with chest wounds and missing internal organs, similar to Fry, but with rough cuts. The doctor declared that this was the work of a different perpetrator. Hence, the captain begins to suspect Poe due to rumors about his fight with Randolph. The captain also revealed that Poe had actually fought with Fry before Fry was found dead. Then Lander, angry, demanded a confession from Poe. Poe admitted to the fight with Fry, but insisted he did not kill him nor did he kill Randolph. However, the facts pointed to Poe as a suspect in both deaths. That night, Lander and Poe attended a gathering at Market House to mourn Randolph's death. Afterward, while everyone was gathered to watch Lee play the piano, Lander asked for permission to walk around outside, but actually began searching for clues inside the market house, which he had long suspected. There, Lander was distracted by a painting of a priest. Inside a room, Lander found an officer's uniform with a detached badge, precisely matching the description of the perpetrator given by the guard who had watched over Fry's body at the hospital. Lander brought the uniform to the living room, but before he could get an answer, the captain arrived, reporting that a cadet named Stoddard had disappeared from the academy after an inspection. They discovered that Stoddard had fled the academy, taking all his clothes and belongings with him. In a hurry, Lander then went to Professor Pepe to re-examine the book written by Henry and found that the photo of Henry was the same as the painting he had seen hanging in the market house. Thus Lander went to the Marcus and began interrogating him about the connection between his family and the immortality ritual. Under pressure, Marcus confessed that the author of the book was actually his grandfather. He then started telling the story about Lee, who actually had a polypsy, and with the help of Artemis, they conducted their own treatment method, which was none other than the immortality ritual. Meanwhile, Poe could no longer contain his feelings and express them to Lee, declaring his readiness to do anything to be with her. Consequently, Lee brought Poe to the ice warehouse to carry out the ritual. Poe, driven by his love, surrendered without resistance. Realizing that Artemis and Lee were not at home, Lander immediately suspected that they were conducting the ritual. He quickly rushed to the ice warehouse and arrived just as Lee was about to cut open Poe's chest. Shocked, Lee accidentally dropped the candle, which then started a fire that grew larger and larger. Seeing this, Lander quickly saves Poe. Not long after, burning wooden debris fell on Lee, followed by Artemis, who intended to help her. With all the evidence pointing to Artemis and Lee as the culprits and their subsequent deaths, the investigation of this case was closed. Several weeks later, Poe, who had recovered, came to Lander and revealed the fact he had just realized. The piece of paper from Fry and the message Lander had given him were written in the same handwriting. Poe declared that Lander himself was the mastermind or the actual perpetrator of the murders. Poe also uncovered a tragic story about Matilda, Lander's daughter, who had been kidnapped by three cadets and subsequently assaulted by them one after another. Everything became transparent and interconnected. Lander, who no longer wanted to hide, admitted that Matilda had not run away, but had ended her life by jumping off a cliff. Driven by Matilda's death, Lander began tracking down the culprits and found a clue in the form of a necklace belonging to Fry, which Matilda had pulled on the day she was assaulted. Thus, Lander devised a plan for revenge. 
he lured Fry with a message as if a woman was calling him to meet at the border, a location where Lander ultimately killed him. The next day, Lander received news that someone had taken Fry's heart. He seized this opportunity to direct the clues toward practitioners of the immortality doctrine, thereby disguising himself as the actual perpetrator. Then, Lander identified the second perpetrator, Randolph Ballinger, from Fry's diary, and discovered the third culprit was Stoddard. Lander killed Randolph on the night of Poe's fight with Randy, taking his heart to match the pattern seen in Fry's case, further directing suspicion towards Artemis and Lee. Meanwhile, Stoddard, terrified because his two comrades had been killed, fled the academy before Lander could come to kill him. At this moment, Lander resigned himself to his fate. He left all the decisions to Poe. Despite his great love for Lee, Lander is the one who saves Poe's life from the ritual that should have killed him. In the end, Poe decided to burn the paper evidence of Lander's handwriting and keep all these secrets to himself. The story concludes with Lander, who has come to terms with Matilda's death, preparing to face his new life and thus, the story ends here.